Hi, I'm Dan Klingman with the Link Electric Weld School. Today we're going to go over the steps of how to earn your merit badge utilizing the SMAW process. There's several advantages of the SMAW process. One being you can weld outside and you don't have to worry about uh, wind. The other one is it's very flexible as far as welding on different types of materials and it's a simple setup that we will go over here shortly. Before we get started on our merit badge utilizing the SMAW process, we're going to need a few pieces of equipment and some tools. We're going to be using the Lincoln AC225 buzz box. The machine is fairly simple. We've got our work in our electrode lead and we have our amperage range selector. Some of the other equipment that we're going to need is we're going to need electrode. We're going to be utilizing an E6013 electrode. The E is classification as electrode, meaning that it's going to carry current. The 60 represents minimum tensile strength as 60,000 tensile strength. The 1 is an all position electrode. If it has a 2, it would be flat and horizontal only. And the 13 represents that it's AC as the primary polarity, but it can also be used on DC as well. So once we've selected our stick electrode, we're going to use a simple rule to determine what our started, starting amperage should be. This electrode is one eighth of an inch, so the rule of thumb is one amp per thousandths of electrode diameter. So 125 thousandths, our starting current will be 125 amps. Now that may vary up or down depending on the welder, but it's a good place to start and get you in a ballpark to, to make a good weld. Some of the other tools that we have, We've got a piece of soapstone to mark our initials on our pad. And when we're done welding, the plates are going to be hot, so we want to make sure we pick them up with a pair of pliers. The stick welding process does create a slag, so we're going to need a chipping hammer to remove the slag. And we've also got a wire brush to clean the weld after we, we remove the slag. Before we start welding, we want to make sure we have the proper safety gear. We want to have a flame resistant jacket. We've got our uh, beanie for any sparks, uh, clear safety glasses. We're also going to be utilizing the Viking auto darkening helmet. <clears throat> you can utilize the, or select the proper shade by referencing the E205. And we're also going to use a pair of stick welding leather gloves. And we also want to make sure we have the right ventilation. So we're going to use the MobiFlex fume extraction unit. The other piece of uh, <clears throat> safety equipment will be the MSDS sheet, the material safety data sheet. That can be found in the box of electrode and you can reference any type of uh, materials and things like that in the electrodes. In the SMAW process, anytime your power source is turned on, you've got open circuit voltage available at the electrode, even if you're not welding. So be sure that you've always got dry gloves with no holes in them to avoid getting electrical shock. Now that we ensure we've got the proper safety gear, it's going to be time to start welding. We're going to check our machine, make sure we're on the proper current. We've also determined that we need roughly 125 amps. However, this machine we have a choice of 120 or 135, and I chose to go with a little bit higher current just to ensure proper uh, bead wetting. So we're going to turn the machine on. And the first project that we're going to do is we're going to uh, trace our initials with the E6013 electrode. So I'm going to write my initials on the plate. Okay. We're going to grab our stick electrode holder, our 6013 electrode, turn our fume extraction system on. Now we're going to start welding. Okay, now that we've uh, wire brushed our part, we've finished welding, you'll notice while I was welding, I was using a drag technique. When we utilize the SMAW process, you want to make sure you drag. The rule is you, if there's slag, you drag. That'll help ensure to keep the slag behind us and not roll in front of the puddle and possibility of getting slag inclusions. So we want to make sure we always use a drag technique. The next one is going to be building a pad. This is going to uh, get us into the proper technique for striking the arc, maintaining a, a proper travel speed down the joint, as well as arc length. 
So as we get used to this and keep practicing, our welds will get straighter and they'll look a much more uniform. It's very important, we're gonna put the first bead down. It's very important that we clean the slag in between each pass, it's very important. So we've got our machine set to 120 amps. We've got our E6013 electrode and we're gonna turn our fume extraction on and start welding. We've now finished welding our pad with the SMAW process. We went ahead and brushed it and cleaned it up. And now we're gonna move on to the next project. The next project is going to be a butt joint. And we're gonna put these two plates together uh, tight. And we're gonna tack them up and then weld uh, one pass down each side. Now before we start welding on that, we wanna make sure that we have uh, the proper technique. We talked about how to set current. We talked about uh, some of the angles. This, this particular weld, this is a drag electrode. So all we're gonna have to really do is, is set, literally set the electrode on the plate and then just drag it with just a slight, maybe five to 10 degree drag angle. This is our drag angle or travel angle and this is gonna be our work angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack these up. Just a quick tack, cover it. One more tack. Okay, now we're gonna make a weld right down the middle. Okay, we finished up our, our butt joint. We welded on both sides. Now we're gonna move on to our next project. Our next project is gonna be a T-joint. We're gonna take the two plates and it's going to resemble a T. Uh, we're gonna tack it up first and then go ahead and weld it. Uh, one of the things to remember is, you know, we're using an E6013 uh, fill freeze electrode here. There are a lot of different electrodes manufactured and how you determine which one to use is gonna be based on several different things, but uh, some of them are the plate material, plate thickness, position, and things like that, a machine available that, that you have. So we're just using one electrode here of many different electrodes for a lot of different applications. So we're gonna turn on our fume extraction. Put a tack at each end. Covered. Covered. One side it welded up. You can see the slag coating that's forming on top of the weld there. And the, the purpose of the slag is to help bring impurities uh, that's in the weld up to the top and uh, get them out of the weld. It's molten, the slag is lighter than the molten puddle and it, it floats to the top. There's one side, we're gonna go ahead, weld up the other side and take a look at it.
Now keep in mind that the plate was already warm from our weld on the other side. So we're getting a lot of heat into this plate right now. And, and again, it's only about an eighth of an inch thick. So we're gonna let it cool for just a minute before we take the slag off this side. It'll be a lot easier to get off. Okay, we finished up our T joint. We welded both sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our last joint and that's going to be the lap joint. We're gonna take the two plates and put them in a configuration like this. Uh, just a tip is to try to center that lap joint on the bottom plate. That way it gives you an, an even amount of uh, heat sink when you're making the weld. You don't want to put it way out to the edge like that. Uh, that way it has a good chance of your weld wanting to run over. So try to tack it up right about in the center there. One thing we want to remember too is you'll notice that I'm welding from left to right. Typically a right-handed welder will weld from left to right. And again, we talked about the drag technique. I'm still dragging it. But if you're left-handed, the only thing you'll do different is you'll go from right to left. So we're going to go ahead and tack up our joint. Just finish the lap joint on one side. You'll notice how the slag's starting to peel. And we'll brush it off there like that. Give it a brush. Then we'll flip it over and do the other side. We just finished up our lap joint. We welded both sides. And that concludes all the different projects that we have for earning our merit badge for welding. Just want to wrap up with a couple different tips. Uh, one is uh, how to start the arc. And you notice there's a couple different techniques. One of them is a scratch technique, and the other one is a tap technique. So with the scratch technique, you're basically acting just as if you were lighting a match. Just a nice, soft, gentle scratch. And you'll scratch, and you want, you'll let the arc get established, hold it for just a little bit there in a longer arc, and then go down and drag the electrode down the joint. The other technique is the tap technique, and it, it's just like it says. You actually tap the electrode on the plate to get it started. Again, you tap, pull a little bit of a long arc, let the arc get established, and then go down and drag the electrode down the joint. So two different methods, see which one works best for you. And remember, there's a lot of different careers available in welding. Uh, welders are in a big demand right now. If you want more information on welding or the equipment that you saw today, you can visit linkelectric.com. And for more information on the merit badge for welding, you can visit scouting.org.